like they usually don't even know. They don't even have a guess, actually. Like, what was the first country to get the eight-hour day, at least on paper? Anybody know? So, I mean, yeah, so like, yeah, it's one of those mysterious things. But it's, it's Australia, oh. and they got it. And we don't. I guess we don't really think of Australia as being the most progressive. I mean, it's, it's like well, in the industrialized world, I think it has the second worst division of uh, stratification of wealth after the United States. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but it wasn't always like that. And uh, everybody in Australia knows this story. It's uh, not well known outside of Australia. They got the eight-hour day, of course, because of uh, armed rebellion, the way most things yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> When in 1851 they struck gold upon the ground, every voyage was a long months upon the stormy sea. Some to seek their fortune, others escaping slavery. What they found on the gold fields was ruled by brutish thugs, and okay, taxis mixed with swinging billy clubs. The gold was getting scarce, the cops were getting worse, the diggers burned their licenses, bound to end this curse, they swore it over. Beneath the Southern Cross, they stand together and break the license law. For twenty different nations, they gather here as one in Ballarat beneath the Southern Sun. The crowd tried to divide, the giving preference to some. The diggers wouldn't have it. They said it's all of us or none. They built a stockade. While the redcoats massed nearby, and they heard the miners shouting, We're ready now to die. The rebel miners waited for whatever lay in store. And on one December morning, in 1854, the redcoats attacked the camp. Dozens there would fall among these brave gold diggers who'd risen to the hall. They swore an oath beneath the Southern Cross. They'd stand together and break the license laws. Southern sun. They swore an oath beneath 